Monday. It's always fun to wake up to news about someone who's following in the steps of a great religious leader in our country that has blazed the trail of utter and complete insanity. <laughs> I knew you were going somewhere with us. No, but darn it. That other music was playing too loud. I was trying to say insanity. Um, uh, this is someone who actually, I uh, kind of fell in the steps of Lori Vallow Dayville. Yeah, which that's is, not somebody you want to emulate, is it? No, it's not. And it's interesting because this week on the show, uh, with one of the interviews, I believe the conversation is with Lori Hellis this week. Uh, she's talking about, you know, there's there's going to be more Lori Vallow Daybills out there. If you think she's like kind of a one-off, think again. There's a lot of extreme thinking that stems off of LDS. Again, I'm not saying it's LDS, but I'm saying you're creating a fucking breeding ground for craziness. Um, and uh, it's, uh, yeah, uh, Blaze Thibodeau, the Arizona teenager who recently sparked an international search has been found safe in Alaska. While Blaze is now out of harm's way, shocking details from court documents have shed light on the circumstances surrounding his disappearance and reveal a troubling connection to the Lori Vallow Daybell case. Prosecutors are pushing for the extradition of Blaze's mother, Spring Thibodeau. They got some fun names here. And her brother, Brooke Hale. Oh, it's okay, Brooke. So it's kind of like a water theme going on here. It's the elements. Mm -hmm. Blaze, Brooke, Spring. Uh, you know, maybe it's about, um, 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 what do you call it? Um, being uh, baptized. Does that have to do with it? Like what? Baptized by Water. fire and springs and brooks? Maybe. Maybe it's about being baptized in, in the earth. Or maybe it's uh, about know. having a nice campfire on the side of the river and, uh, you know, catching uh, trout and being eaten by an alligator. Uh, Maybe. Uh, they're uh, wanting to get her back to Arizona to face charges related to custodial interference. These developments come after the U.S. Customs and Border Protection agents located the group near the Alaska-Canada border. Blaze's story begins with an early departure from Phoenix Sky Harbor last Monday, accompanied by his mother, older sister Abby, and his uncle Brooke Hale. Court documents indicate that Brooke was the leader of the group, and, shockingly enough, shared doomsday beliefs similar to those held by Lori Vallow. Because we all know that's the best route to operate your life in. Doomsday beliefs. It kind of goes directly against the Bible if anyone likes to pay attention or, I don't know, has read it. Um, because yeah. I, I believe it kind of says in there, no one knows the time. Well, that's just it. And it seems like they've got it circled on their calendar and their phone alerts them. Hey, you have one week before the apocalypse, you know? Yeah, I, I can't say anyone who's ever predicted it has been very accurate, uh, who was sentenced to life in prison for the murder of her children, uh, driven by beliefs, of course, of the biblical apocalypse. According to records, Spring Thibodeau believes Blaze to be a, oh, here we go, Dividic Messenger. Is that how you say it? Or Davidic, maybe? Da Davidic, Davidic Messenger. When you Google Davidic Messenger, what comes up? Let's see. <laughs> you do that, I'm going to read this. Someone destined to play a significant role in the second coming of Jesus Christ. Of course. Who wouldn't believe that their children are that? Brooke Hale left behind notes for his family, including a list of questions for the Lord. That's good. Which included a query, am I one of the witnesses who preaches with Blaze? Another letter resembled a will, resembled a will, where he distributed his money and belongings based on a dream suggesting the end of the world was imminent. Okay, how the fuck do you believe that the end of the world is imminent, yet you're you're distributing your belongings and money? Wouldn't That's a good point. Wouldn't that kind of like negate all of that if the end is near? It's like none of that really matters at that point. Mm -hmm. Blaze's father, Ben, took legal action by filing a marriage dissolution on October 17th, a move prompted by the realization that his son had been taken against his will. In response to uh, this, a judge granted him emergency sole custody. I'm telling you, if I was Blaze's father, I'd be probably in hiding uh, with yeah, the run. child and uh, violating whatever law I need to violate to make sure that mom or this crazy family doesn't get a hold of that child because God knows what's going to happen there. Probably ending up in a bucket in someone's backyard. 
Uh, one crucial aspect highlighted in the court documents is that Blaze does not share his mother's end of the world beliefs. Mm. Instead, he said to believe that Spring suffers from a mental illness. Well, yes, because that is exactly what's going on. In the legal proceedings, as they unfold, Spring Thibodeau has a family court date scheduled for Wednesday, adding another layer of complexity to this deeply troubling and bizarre case. Uh, the extradition of Spring and Brooke back to the Arizona will be a significant step in addressing the charges that they now face. Blaze's safe return brings relief now to the family. Uh, but for the love of God, can we please put these people away? Because this is just step one. If we're going to go to the case of Lori Vallow Daybell and look at the beginnings of this, where it's like, well, here's all the ways you could have intervened and stopped children from being murdered and stuffed into buckets and burned alive. Yeah. Um, there was a lot of opportunities for that, but they were captured by Lori's wild looks and gazes through her blonde, <laughs> her blonde hair that said, oh, it's okay. We're at, the kids are at Frozen. They're not dead in Chad's backyard. Um, this is a case where the ch these kids will end up in somebody's backyard dead if you don't stop this shit right now. Yeah, it's very true. Um, the Davidic servant is one that uh, harkens back to the second and third book of Revelation. Okay. Um, and it does have to do... I. <sighs> We're tapping back into my who my religious background of I spent four years studying religion in college. And so I've and I've blocked a lot of that out. <laughs> now it's <laughs> coming to thing. use for you, see? Yeah, right. I, I it has something to do with I think John and being a servant. Oh, I'm gonna screw this up and I need to look this up so I'm not completely screwing it up. But it, it goes back to the book of Revelation and mm -hmm being a voice for the angels, if I remember correctly. A voice for the angels. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's see. <sighs> so essentially yeah. they're saying that, that the child uh, is a messenger from the angels and they're going to play a significant role in the second coming. I'm going to guess yeah. that somewhere along the line, they're going to have to die. Uh, and that's going to oh, be yeah. part to of the. Oh yeah. To fulfill that. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So that's, you know, and, and I don't I don't know that it says that because it's been so long since I've read any part of that. But, yeah, I, I the way that they twist and turn this, um, that these followers, these doomsday followers do it is is that they have to die to fulfill the prophecy. And they're not afraid. So you're going to end up with dead kids. Yeah. You know who else <laughs> like dies to fulfill prophecies? Um, let's see here. Uh, Heaven's Gate. Mm -hmm. um, David Koresh's cult, um, mm -hmm. uh, Jonestown. Um, I'm seeing a trend yeah. here. People that think Are they you? have to die to fill the prophecy. And for some reason, it just never seems to work. Want to listen ad free? Want advance access to all of our interviews before anyone else? Become a True Crime Today Premium Plus subscriber on Apple Podcasts. You get every episode commercial free. So you can binge on True Crime. Until you can binge no more. Search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts now. Or go to our podcast page and sign up now. More of the Hidden Killers podcast next.